Good morning YouTube. We are back at the house where I did the drilling of the orifices for cooling maintenance. We've got two ream systems. We've got an RARL 025 from 2013. That's a two-ton. And we have an RARL 61 also from 2013. This one is matched up to the furnace that I drilled the orifices on and the other one is a complete new system. So we're going to tear these down and get them cleaned up and then uh, do an I-manifold report on both systems and we'll try to keep you along for the ride for that. So we got the initial cover off of the two-ton unit and you should be able to see that's pretty pretty nasty. Now I'm not 100% sure when the last cooling check was but um, that coil definitely needs a good cleaning. We're gonna tear the sides off make sure we get it all clean as good as possible. Everything else seems to be generally decent. I'm not crazy about a quarter inch liquid line that close to the unit but um, I guess we can't uh, can't fix somebody else's decision to run a quarter inch on this unit. Quarter inch and looks like five eighths. So they're probably not getting the capacity that they have paid for. But uh, I think the I-manifold might give us an explanation on that or tell us what it actually is. So we'll see. Hi, Papa. How are you? Yes. Your little jacket. Aren't you the sweetest? Well, I'd say that coil looks completely different now. No more scummies, slimies. Inside's clean. Now we just got to put her back together. Well, interestingly enough, I'm not finding any blower performance data in the book other than what the variable speed motor is supposed to do on certain dip switches. Um, dip switches are showing seven, or that they should be pushing 800 CFM, and I'm getting seven flashes on the board. Um, I'm going to check static just because I want to see how much restriction that the filters are giving and see where we're at there but I don't have anything to compare it to luckily it is 75 degrees inside the house so the I-manifold will be able to calculate its estimated airflow fairly easily for a while uh, while the system balances out before we hit 69.8 degrees or whatever the cutoff specific is so I'm going to check static and then uh, we'll fire up the AC and go from there. Well, we're running almost to 0.7. So static is not great. But um, it is what it is. I guess I could go ahead and pull the filter out and see what it does. We've got a 0.33 across the blower. Uh, 0.33 at the positive side of the blower and 0.33 on the return. So I'm going to go pull the filter. It is a pleated and it hasn't been changed since January 31st and it is May 5th. So five months on a pleated or four months roughly. Three? I don't know. I can't do math. That was a significant improvement. Of course there is no filter in it now but we went from a 0.33 to a 0.19 which should take our overall static down that far 
and we'll end up with a 0 0.5, 0 0.52. With no filter, it's not bad, other than not having a filter. So, I'm going to stick my air probes in and go outside and get my pressure probes and stuff set up. Okay, so the system has been running for several minutes. My subcooling seems high, but I don't have anything to tell me exactly what subcooling should be on that unit. I know some systems will run up to like a 16 degree subcooling. But um, I've got a 25 degree temperature split. 25.2, which comes out to say that it is just under 600 CFM estimated airflow. My dip switches are flashing 700 still, so I'm going to play with that and. Uh, see what I can do to get that to give me a little more airflow. Okay, so I think I found it as to why I'm not getting 800 CFM. The system has a dip switch that is designed to allow dehumidification when connected to a humidistat. And if there is no humidistat connected but that switch is turned to the dehumidification feature it will permanently reduce airflow by 15 percent so I haven't taken the door off to confirm but I'm gonna guess that SW2-1 is in the on position and if that's the case I'm gonna go ahead and kill it so we can get our full airflow when that switch is enabled and it was the LED readout will have a lowercase c with a d beside it or an uppercase capital C with a d beside it and I was getting a, a second stage capital C with a lowercase d beside it I didn't completely understand what that meant but that's why we were not getting our 800 CFM and we had a 25 degree temperature split okay so We've got our airflow up and our temperature split is only about 20, what was that, 22? No, 21. We've got a calculated tonnage of about 1.8, 22,025 BTUs. My target subcooling is a manual input number and since I don't have a reference, that's what we're going to leave it at. The target head pressure and the fact that we've got target su or subcooling where it is leads me to think something that I wanted to get some confirmation on from you guys. If I've got a quarter inch liquid line, I would ha have a higher subcooling because I've got refrigerant stacking up in that quarter inch line faster than if I had a 3 8 line. Um, so this is where we're at at the moment. We're gonna call it better than it was and um, move on to the second unit. Before I finish, let's see here. It's the same profile, but I wanted to use the one that's there and go ahead and benchmark it at current performance. Benchmarking basically adjusts your profile to what you had or have at this time. So if I go back to my target subcooling, it's now 17. Head pressure's 270. Suction pressure's 120. And 17.4 target superheat based on what I just had for performance a split second ago. We're gonna go ahead and 
check my system performance our calculated airflow is still low under 800 about 729 but we're going to go ahead and create the report take a system snapshot and email it to myself for future reference then we're going to go ahead and go to projects and switch to the project for the first floor system and go move my probes and stuff and get that unit started up On this system we've got very low return static, well, low comparatively, at 0.2324, and when we add supply we go to 0.7. That is between the coil and the furnace. Um, coil is basically brand new and totally inaccessible for cleaning sake. But that's where we're at for static, 0.7. Well, we lost our automatic airflow calculation because our return air temperature dropped below 69.6. That's where we're at. We're at a 14 degree subcool, 15 degree superheat, just under a 20 degree split. And uh, I need to change the battery in my return air probe. But that's where we're at on this one. Not doing too bad. Overall performance is just under 5 tons. And I can't see that since I don't have an air probe. But I'm happy with this one. We're doing pretty good. Well, besides not um, moving enough air miles. That's in uh, road. the second floor system with that dehumidification feature enabled. The worst part of it was the uh, undersized refrigerant piping and the condition of the outdoor coils, the dirtiness. as. The systems are about two years old, like I said, 2013, and the um, company that used to service them should have been there the last summer. And I, I, I can't imagine where the units are located that those coils got that dirty that fast in just one season, one year. I suppose it's possible, but it seems like somebody was actually slacking pretty badly. But anyway, I'm headed back down towards Fayetteville, and um, I don't think I'm going to shoot any video on it, but I am headed to go change an evaporator coil on a TAM-4 ton and a half air handler. Not that old. I think maybe within two years. And, uh, well, maybe three. They're 2012 serial numbers on them. But the evaporator is leaking already. So that's what I'm headed to do next. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Send me your hate mail. We'll see you on the next video.
cold, cold night. But man, your heart is heavy. 